see we're gonna get along just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's I'm just Back there. You want me to put those out? Yep, I was just changing the batteries. Okay. Put those out. Yep, we better step out here so we don't have the feedback. I just put new batteries. Well, the regular ones aren't working. Um, some are, some aren't. There's a was a little trouble, so we're running backups. Uh, so if that green light is, as I mean, it's working. Yep. Uh huh. It had a red light on it when I, I sat know. down. I know. <laughs> that one just bleak. It's flashing. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, that. I guess a little mass that prevents the staticky. Oh, the new ones have a rubber grommet. You want this one down here so you can get a little more into it? No, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't, don't smash the microphone uh, by accident. <laughs> Okay. No, did he? Oh. He's got okay. it right next to the. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm fairly like coordinated. Yeah. Actually, yes. Well, no. I'm not trying to find out what he does. Ah, it was on last night. I know. Yeah. It wasn't recording anything, right? We're just doing a backup. Are you the granddaughter? Are we ready? Goodbye. I'm going to call a meeting to order at 6:30. We will start with the pledge of allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Miller, here. Winchester? Here. Stowell? Here. Wiggins? Here. Collis? Here. I would make a motion to excuse Scheib Snyder. Support. Motion by Collis, support by Winchester. Uh, she called off at about a little after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda approval. The motion would entertain a. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. I'll support. Uh, I would like to pull the agenda, please, to add an item. Okay, don't be so slow. Sorry, about it. you guys were like. Well, wake up over there. <coughs> what do you want to do? Okay. Uh, I would like to add under new business item B. Equipment Replacement Fund Discussion.
I make the motion, amend the okay. motion. Thank you. To uh, add under new business item B, equipment replacement fund discussion. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion and an amendment. Uh, we have a motion to approve the agenda as amended with equipment fund discussion being item B under new business. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And, and just so you know, Madam Secretary, I always take notes. If you ever run into a problem, you can always call because I'll be able to tell you who made what. <laughs> just a habit I developed a long time ago because all of a sudden you get a phone call one day and the secretary goes, I thought I had it on the recording and it's not there. And I do it too, so. It's come in handy a couple of times. Natural. Okay, so consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial. They do not require discussion by NACFA board and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion. If, dis if discussion is desired on an item, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will automatically be moved to the last item under new business. Chair would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Motion to approve, second by Stowell. I need a roll call. Miller? Yes. Winchester? Yes. Stowell? Yes. Hollis? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. We will now move down to public comment on agenda items only. Members of the public may address the board once recognized by the chair. Comments are limited to three minutes. Prior to addressing the board, members of the public will state their name, address for the record. A second public comment is available prior to the adjournment of the meeting for all other comments. And thank you ahead of time for your cooperation. Is there anyone for public comment? Going once, twice, sold. We will move to presentations of which we have none. That'll take us into unfinished business, articles of incorporation, revisions, and creating board policies. Chief? Yes, I can give the board an update on this. Uh, last month, we approved our attorney, Rita Lauer, to meet with the other two uh, township attorney representatives. Uh, I talked to Rita last week. They did have that meeting. She said it went about two and a half hours. It was a Zoom meeting. Uh, she said um, she thought it went pretty well. There were a couple of things that needed to get ironed out um, that she was going to put together and submit back to the board to show what those were and you know if it could be worked out. And uh, so she will have that ready or a response ready um, prior to next month's meeting. Okay. okay. <coughs> All right, we'll move to new business. Item A, fiscal year 2025 budget workshop request. All right, so initially this was going to be kind of what the, the agenda item specifies as a 2025 budget workshop request. However, due to there not being really any more items on the agenda tonight um, and that I've got some work completed, to share uh, with the board. I think we'll just um, um, get into the nuts and bolts of it, if you don't mind, instead of just simply scheduling something out for sure. a special nope, We've got the time. Uh, if the board would please bear with me uh, getting to the actual topic, I want to preface it with um, um, a discussion that ultimately ends at, at the budget. Um, so if you would. Um, as some of you know, um, my wife and I have been traveling down to the Dominican for the last 10 years. Um, we have uh, gotten pretty comfortable there with the people and um, networked and um, met a lot of uh, people in, in towns outside of the tourist areas, things like that. Um, 
my, my wife is, is a very spiritual, spiritual person, as am I somewhat. We, we are pretty active in our church and um, you know, do all that stuff. And um, over the past year or so, uh, it's just kind of come to our hearts that uh, we wanted to start a organization, a charity, um, to help humanitarian efforts down there. Uh, over the past several months, um, we've kind of really gotten into this, and we have started a nonprofit uh, called Hope for the Dominican Republic, which um, has gotten all the paperwork finished. Um, it's everything's in motion to start this. Being that um, we're going to start operating this charity, um, both my, my wife is planning on retiring from her job with Genesee County this summer. Um, I will be, she will be the, the front man in this. I will, I will be on the back end doing, helping her when she needs it, but mostly doing the administrative stuff. Um, we've kind of dedicated ourselves to this and made the decision that we're gonna go forward with this. And uh, in order for me to be able to commit the time to do this, um, I would like to um, give my intent to the board that I will be stepping down as fire chief uh, at the end of this fiscal year. That's June 30th? June 30th. Okay. Th that is my intent. Um, this was not an easy decision. <coughs> I've been on this department for 27 years, 19, over 19 years as the chief. Um, but uh, I, I, I think we're just at that transition in our life that, that my wife and I want to focus on other things and have time to do that. And um, unfortunately, uh, my job, my responsibilities that I do right now are, uh, are a lot. It's very busy. Um, which I will get into the second part of this. Uh, I, I do have a proposal idea that I would like to share with the board. Um, I believe it is a very um, efficient economical um, plan uh, for a transition. Um, as many of you know, my responsibilities are much, much more than what a typical fire chief's responsibilities are, um, as far as the administrative side of things. Uh, that's something that has just happened as this department has grown over the years. And, you know, we started as a paid on call department with, um, you know, not doing medicals, uh, one pay period a month. Uh, it was very simplistic, but as we've grown over the years and our call volume and everything, um, things that have come along, adding to the administration responsibilities, I've just kind of taken under my wing as, oh, it's just one more thing. I can, I, you know, I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, that's built up over the last 20 years, and so, you know, currently, um, probably. 50% of my job is pretty much out of the scope of a typical fire chief for any fire department. Um, that being said, uh, again, after much thought of how this transition would take place, um, I, I, again, I, I have a, I want to approach the board with this plan that I have. Um, if you would, I have a packet for mm -hmm. each of you. And, Debbie, there is, if you wouldn't mind taking one for uh, Diane to, to have as well. <clears throat> one for the secretary. Uh, so what I prepared for you, um, I will start with the first page. Um, this is our job description that is in our policies for my position. Um, this has been a working policy since 2005 when I started. And I'm not asking you to read every 
word in it, but as you can see, if you peruse through it, the typical duties and responsibilities that are listed under it are basically management of the fire department from a command perspective, overseeing certain things, overseeing that we're you know, in conformity with uh, fiscal management and budgeting and planning and research. Um, but it is in no way, shape, or form say that I am actually doing those um, things myself. Um, the next stapled uh, document that's behind that is kind of an overview of my current administrative duties that I'm performing outside of what the fire chief job description is. And as you can see, it's quite lengthy. Um, it goes through payroll functions, uh, human resource functions, accounting, billing, uh, compliance, uh, miscellaneous things that I do, uh, you know, that again are, are outside of the scope of what a typical fire chief does. Um, I have done a lot of research on this over the past few weeks. Uh, just about every, well, every organization that I've contacted has administrative personnel mm -hmm. on their department that perform these functions, either um, exclusively for the fire for their fire department, or kind of a combination of an, an administrative type person, director, manager, whatever you want to call it, um, and then you know some people within that township that that fire department's associated do general clerical things. Mm -hmm. um, being an authority, we don't have that luxury. We're our own agency, if you will. So again, these are just um, uh, kind of a list of responsibilities that I have been doing along with the chief's position. Uh, the point of all this is that when I do step down, uh, whomever takes over my position, um, you're, it's going to be impossible to find somebody that will take on all of these things that I'm doing. And quite frankly, it wouldn't be fair to them. Um, again, this is something that's grown over time. It's gotten to where it is. Um, there are not enough hours in a regular work week schedule to do both of these jobs. Um, my, uh, my idea that I propose to you is that when I do leave that assistant chief Weil take over as the fire chief for the department. I feel as far as the uh, general responsibilities of a fire chief's position goes that he's more than capable of doing that. Uh, he has been by my side since um, 2004, 2005. Uh, He's been my right-hand person. He knows the ins and outs of, of all that uh, this job description um, is. Um, as far as the administrative duties go, I would uh, ask the board that um, a separate position be created. Uh, administrator, uh, manager, whatever you want to call that. And um, that I would be willing to do, continue to do those responsibilities. Um, that will give, allow enough time to, for me to do what, what my future plans are doing outside of the department and allow me to continue to do what I've been doing without any change, interruption, uh, big transitions. Um, I, I realize uh, there would obviously be a payroll deduction in that. I, you know, my my salary would change and go down, um, which, if you look at the third, I'm sorry, third page. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. The third, the third page of the administrative duties, <coughs> the last page. I've uh, contacted several agencies 
throughout the area, um, getting information on their administrative staff and what their generally uh, salary benefit package is. And as you can see, um, they're, they run from 53000 to 78000 a year, plus full benefits. Um, I would be, I thought 65,000 was, was a fair number. Um, that would be roughly a $28,000 reduction in my salary that I'm making right now. Uh, the, also the fact that um, when, my right, when my wife retires this summer, uh, she has her years in that she can take her full retirement and she gets retiree health care. So I can go on to her policy and therefore another cost savings to the department would be roughly $20,000 of health care premiums that would be uh, coming off of the, the budget. Uh, I know this is a lot to digest. Um, I have also in here, the next pages are two letters. One is from our accountants, uh, Pfeiffer, Hannaford, and Polka. Uh, the other is from our bookkeeper that we have um, that comes in once a week for an hour or two a week, um, kind of supporting the idea that I just explained to you mm -hmm. and the reasons behind it. Um, I think the accountants here have a, a, a very good grasp on um, how other agencies run. They've been doing this for many, many years and primarily do government, municipality, fire departments. Um, and then lastly, what the agenda item is, <coughs> is all about is a draft budget for the upcoming fiscal year uh, with this plan enrolled into it plus the regular annual budget stuff that I've prepared. Also keeping in mind of Rose Township's resolution last year that they would only support a 4% increase in this year's budget. Um, that is what I was able to keep that draft to. So like I said, I know it's a, it's a lot to digest right now, um, but if this transition is going to happen, um, you know, it, we needed to get it out immediately and so you, the board has time to digest everything and... Is, is the sal... I'm sorry. Go no, go ahead. Is the salary for the administrative assistant in line item 700.5? Yes, sir. Okay, so so we wouldn't see it. No. <clears throat> uh, I can share with you. Uh, I just had this in there because I was taking notes on it, but I do have basically all of the positions listed on the department as far as the full time and administrative full time people go, and what each salary what person would be okay are there any questions so yes yeah, please far. ask me questions <laughs> how much time will be will you be in the United States how much time you, you plan on being out of it and can you do this remotely so to your last question yes a hundred percent of what I do can be done remotely um, in fact, uh, a lot of it uh, right now is done from my home when after I leave the office, uh, either at night or in the mornings before I come in. So, yes. Um, to answer your first question, uh, we, our plan is to be um, um, back and forth, both, both here and there. Um, probably 
this fall we're going to head down there and stay for two to three months for this first trip down there uh, to get things going um, I do have an office uh, down there uh, that I can work out of and, and do in fact uh, I'm you know, during my vacations the last 10 years um, we usually went in April and November and I was doing my some of my work from so you've already tested this and I've it's, already it's tested doable. It, yes I have a couple of questions. Yes. And, and I'm just to start, I'm going to make a statement as the chair of this board. You know, Rose Township can say what they want to say, but this board is where the decisions for NACFA are made. Then they go back to the townships for ratification. And, and I can appreciate saying that that's what we're interested in seeing, and I'm, I'm referencing the 4%. But I have an issue with it overall because... <clears throat> Rose Township Board doesn't run NACFA, we do. That being said, I'm looking at the full-time wages and personnel alone, and these are wages that have been worked out through the contract with the unions. There's a 14% increase under personnel. Now, that means you've got to take something away somewhere else. I notice on the front page there's a drop of 10% in revenue projected. So if you've got a drop of 10% in revenue and an increase of 14% in personnel, Something else has to lose. The 10% drop in revenue is mainly due to grants. Grant funding. Okay, and those, that's fine. Those are always an unknown. Um, but at the same time, what I'm asking you, as I look at a 14% in increase in personnel, if you're, and you said you were trying to stay within the 4% that was dictated, I don't think it was dictated, I would take it as a recommendation. My question is, where are the areas that had to lose in order to make that up? Because we didn't have a lot of wiggle room in last year's budget. We lost um, about uh, 90000 in debt service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we've paid off the engine that Holly Township uh, loaned us the money mm -hmm. for. Okay. Uh, we have one more payment on the um, uh, fire station mortgage okay. that we've been paying off for 15 years. Okay. So yes. that's... That, yeah. that's those are good things. Those are those are huge, good huge things. numbers, then. Yeah. yeah. No, and they are, and that's fine. That's great. I, I just, again, I just, um, as the Holly Township supervisor, I would never try to tell the NACFA board what to do. That's not the way it's set up. And I understand that, sir. I was just again going by what was said. what was said by one of my but, townships. But. And if we don't start looking forward to replacing those things and and equipment that we need we're going to well, be back at the same place which we is why were. I wanted to clarify what so we were doing to stay within the parameters see a, a one-time deal if, but after that we need well if, if we're fortunate enough to have payments and that's a great thing my concern was I'm not going to start sacrificing just because somebody barked right and that's not to say that I that I don't respect the request because we know as, as administrators whether we're at the NACFA board or the township level we all have expenses and and revenues and increases to incur. We also happen to be living in a time where everybody just got a 5% raise on their taxable income because of inflation. And, you know, when somebody says to me, I worked out my budget to fit within the parameter that somebody gave me, and I'm looking at a 14% increase on the personnel side, then I have to raise that question. My concern was I wanted to make sure we weren't sacrificing something um, to get there. And forgive me, I may have worded what I said wrong. I, I guess I didn't fit it into the parameters. I had, I had it in the back of my head as something. Probably where it should have stayed. Um, Just saying. So the last page outside of the budgets is kind of a, a the notes for the budget, and it's the next page. Uh, so yes, this, this draft would include the uh, administrative position uh, with a $65,000 a year salary. Um, no need to add another administrative officer position. All of the administrative stuff is still being done with the four administrative 
people that are out in the department. It's, it was the very last page right there. Uh, it also includes adding a, another full-time platoon employee, as we are still continuing to to add to that, you know, that that shift coverage. We are currently at eleven. We are currently at. Um, we have thirteen. I'm sorry. We have twelve total. Mm -hmm. Four of those are administrative full time, and nine are platoon. So adding one more, I'm sorry, eight are platoon. Mm -hmm. So adding one more would 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 be nine. It would take us to thirteen. Take us to thirteen total, yes, sir. And of the thirteen, how many are union? Um, right now, that would be twelve. 12 yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're adding one more employee here, full time employee in this budget. Yes, sir. Draft proposal to cover the shifts. And that employee would not would or would not be union employee. They would be a union employee. Okay. So I do have one question, and 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 don't everybody get excited. When we put this union together, we were under a different, the, un, the, the employees, unfortunately, were under a different stress situation. And we put the union together, or they put it together, and we met and we negotiated with them. The one question I have, especially after this past year, is I feel we made a mistake when we put the assistant chief as a union employee. And I've talked to other departments, and that's typically not what happens. I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying it's typically not. Yes. And, and my problem is, as we went through some litigation over this past year, I found it awkward that the chief was on an island all by himself, and his assistant was actually on the other side of the table. And I, you know, I don't know what steps. I realize that has to be negotiated and so forth. But before we start adding more union employees, that would be something I would ask this board to think about and for us to look at, mm -hmm. especially right now if we're in this transitional sp spot where we make those changes. And we're talking a year from now before we renegotiate, correct? Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm talking for the health of the department as I watched what has gone down for the last year. Um, I was at those um, meetings and um, that was the glaring thing for me was that here is the chief all by himself over here and his assistant is on the other side of the table. And I would, <coughs> I would like to see as we move forward changing that. And I, I can't speak for the union, but I, I have a feeling that if we were to go down that road of, of reestablishing that threshold line, that it probably would not be that big of a deal. Well, and, and I think my reputation stands, I, from the day I've come here, I've been for um, getting realistic wages for them, and I've stood up for them at every opportunity I've had, but I just saw it through a different set of glasses over this past year, and I think it's something the board needs to consider yep. going forward. Yeah. Well, even as uh, the chief was on the island by himself, I feel the union did the right thing, and we're now. I'm not and, finding yeah. fault with them. I'm just no. looking at the setup. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I, I agree with you. It should be uh, more than one person on the island. Yeah, I mean that's just. If it's the assistant to the chief, then it shouldn't be put in an adversarial position. Mm -hmm. I guess is a way to put it. And as this board, we should have the same kind of contract with them. Yeah. As, as I, just, yes. I, I just wanted to bring it up as we're looking at making these changes yeah. because um, it, it was green to us. It came to us that way. I understood why the union came. I remember the night that uh, Mr. Gamka chastised them for forming a union, and I literally looked at him and said, you caused it. We, end up, we know how it got here. And I never thought anything of it at the time we were putting it together until we went through that litigation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when it had a, it was glaring and right in front of us. Mm -hmm. so. Chief, when do you have to know about this? Well, well whether we want to accept it as is. But typically, know. we look at the budget next month. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. For uh, the second Chief time. met with me right. earlier and mm -hmm. asked, and, and talked about this 
and I felt that it was important to bring it now. One of the reasons we had, we were going to ask for a separate meeting was had there been more things on the agenda or had Rita been here, I didn't want to end up take, taking us till 10 o'clock at right, night. Right. But once there was nothing else to deal with, we felt we could do it tonight. I think it's a lot to absorb. There's some papers you've been given. I know I need my highlighter and go home and read some things, and I'll probably have more questions, and then we bring it back. Yeah, I'm in no way looking for a decision tonight. This is, um, you know, basically ended up leading to the budget. So I wanted to present all that to you, present you with the budget, um, with that idea behind it, as we normally do annually. Mm -hmm. Here's the first look at it. We'll bring it back next month, um, answer any questions in between, um, and go through our regular process. Sounds good. So I, I hope I... have Any other questions at this time? As usual, being proactive and making sure we're well informed. Appreciate well, that. Well, I, I was yeah. just going to say, I hope I've explained everything well enough and given you ample amount of information to <laughs> to digest and look over. And, mm -hmm. and um, like I said, anything else that, that you have questions about, please you know, contact me. Um, uh, these words were not easy to, to come out. Um, <laughs> That's why you came to my office, was to practice. <laughs> um, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It's quite a, yeah, awesome. Yeah, that is. Place I mean, and it's, you've done it's, such a great job. Thank you so much. It's very scary, me. but we're You'll be fine. picking through it day by day. Yeah. So. yeah you'll be fine. And I think this board should probably approve that I should be able to go down there and make sure he's doing the job properly sometime in November for a couple of weeks. Karen and I will be your first If we can get a motion on that. <laughs> well, just you do have a spare bedroom, right? <laughs> just go to the Rose Township my office. Do what? I said just go to the Rose Township board and have them approve it. And I get nowhere with that, am I? Okay. <laughs> All right. If there's no more discussion, I will move on to item B under new business, which is the equipment fund. Uh, so if you would, um, in that draft budget, the third page was the equipment <coughs> replacement fund draft. If you would, I'll kind of pull that out so I can use it as the example. Um, Wait, you didn't number the damn pages. <laughs> it's just a single, the single page for the capital fund. This one here? No. Should be a couple this pages behind it. You said page, page three, but they don't have page numbers. No. In the back, not Is the budget the itself. The pages after the budget. Oh, that one. I have that one. Yes. Right this. there. Right there. You skipped it when you went to this other page. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, we migrated. When I say we, me and the auditors were met last week. Uh, we migrated our QuickBooks account over to the desktop, or I'm sorry, to the online version. Um, Intuit is no longer supporting desktop versions, and after this year, they're not even making it anymore. Mm -hmm. We've known this was coming. Um, I have some familiarity with it because of the um, two uh, boards that I sit on with the Chiefs Association. I'm the treasurer of, and they utilize QuickBooks. Um, I use it for my homeowners association where I live. So I'm somewhat familiar with it, um, but it was a big deal. We had 20 years worth of data that we were migrating over. Uh, we wanted to take our time and make sure we were doing it right. Uh, it did go over. What we didn't realize until we got into doing it is that our capital budget or equipment replacement is treated as a separate uh, budgeted fund. In order to bring this over to QuickBooks, they look at the, the online version, mm -hmm. they look at it as a second account, which means that they would charge us the $90 or whatever plan we have, $45 a month, to hold an account that we generally have one transfer a year, a year in and out of. <laughs> so. The accountants and I were discussing it, and um, I can't tell you the reasons behind why we 
originally made this a budgeted fund other than <coughs> at the very beginning stages of the, de the department we actually had a checking account that we would cut checks out of this budget for but that was 20 years ago um, we basically use this as a savings account mm -hmm. transfer into and out of whatever our fund balance is um, as the clerks for the townships know your guys's accounting system your compare comparable capital equipment is part of your operating mm -hmm. it's just a separate fund that you transfer your fund balance into each year so through talking about this the auditors and I don't feel the need that this equipment replacement needs to be a separate budgeted fund. Just turn it to a line item. We turn it to a line item inside the operating budget, but it'll be restricted. Yeah. Meaning if I need to pull money out for any reasons, like usually in December, I transfer 75 grand or so back into the operating because of we're at the end of the year, we're waiting for our next um, installment of payments from the to two townships after the first of the year, and those usually don't get there till like the f first week after, mm -hmm. and I have a payroll to cover. So we usually, again, there's a transfer of whatever that is in December, and two weeks later, it's transferred back to it the same mm -hmm. amount, so it washes itself out. So we really didn't see a need to, to, to keep this as a separate budget fund. Um, the, the auditors would like to eliminate it and consider it a restricted um, the wording they used is they would like to eliminate the separate equipment replacement fund budgeted fund and establish a restricted fund balance for equipment reserves within the operating fund that sounds good to me I think it makes sense yeah, does that require a separate um, motion or a separate resolution it's going to require a resolution that that the the board approves. you would have that at the next meeting because you don't have it here oh um no no a resolution the resolution would come for me moving i understand money at any time. but i'm saying are you planning on having you don't have it here tonight for us to approve but we no. can make a motion we, to we can make a motion to approve that we bring this uh separate equipment okay but that's why I said do we have to do that in the form of a resolution and you said yes I got confused because the resolution you're talking about a resolution to take money out of that resolution account was you can't just yes. take it out when you we want talking right. about transfer that's down the road no. yes right. it's down the road that's what I that's what I started okay. yep. tonight what you want is the board to approve moving it so tonight I would need a motion Based on to change this to a line item, change this to a uh, established restricted fund balance within the operating budget. So <laughs> grab that paper. <laughs> grab that paper. Read, 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 read that. Read, read that. Will you, Karen? Secretary's over here. All right. I would make a motion to eliminate the separate equipment replacement fund and establish a restricted fund. And, well, and establish a line item. Um, which is a restricted fund balance equipment reserve fund within the operating fund <laughs> within, the operating, <laughs> within the operating budget <laughs> within the operating fund <laughs> we'll should this, we have there you we'll need a resolution to, in order to move yes. the <laughs> Pardon? where's should, your shorthand should we have something that we need a resolution in order to remove money from it is that part of it it's just no that's no separate. you okay. don't need to have that okay. that's okay so I will still be obviously budgeting a certain amount right that we hope to put in to transfer every year it's just not going to be an actual budgeted it just be a line item fund. it's line yes. item. Yep. I'll second that motion Karen okay. <laughs> all right Is I there was any trying to put it in now context it was I got yeah. lost there a any, little. Any further discussion? Un understanding that 
that at the next meeting will we have the resolution to restrict that fund is that your intent no it's restricted by motion we just did it I'll need a resolution at the time I need to move money right okay that's what I mean. all right no further discussion she wants that yellow paper <laughs> yeah right I just reread my notes and I can't even remember. You, you, want me, have a you don't want to go ahead and do a roll call for us? It's on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. It will be. Yes. Uh, Stowell. Yes. Miller. Yes. Alice. Yes. Winchester. Oh, yes. There she, we go. She, she was first. Yeah. I was there. Uh, I didn't hear. <laughs> okay. That takes care of that. That brings us down to reports. We will start with the chief. It's been your whole show tonight. Um... Run reports for January. Starting down to that. <coughs> there it is. Uh, run counts for January. We did 115 calls. 74 of them were medicals. Uh, we did 53 transports. We <coughs> sign offs. Mutual aided to our partners uh, 16 times. Um, we had 41 calls in Rose Township, 51 in Holly Township, and 7 on I-75. Um, average response time to calls was uh, a little bit slower last month at 9.2 uh, because we had 40 priority calls. We usually yeah. don't have that many. That makes the averages go up a little. Because you had what? 40 priority calls where we're running oh, lights and 40. sirens. Gotcha. We're normally around 20, 25. Um, and then we did bring on um, our uh, last full-time employee last month um, who has been a uh, added uh, to the, um, the shifts and is helped drastically in helping cover those open shifts that we we have we, we we're still we're still not there yet uh, again that was my reasoning for bringing on yet another person at the new fiscal year um, I think our number that we looked at getting to what was that Tim or Matt do you remember that would totally cover was it Dan had it was, 20 -something. was it 23 yeah. or something like that 23 full-time employees 23 would cover. full-time employees would cover everything eventually all the you know the gaps days off without overtime pay yes that's mm -hmm. 10 more full-time from where we are exactly so we're halfway there baby steps Uh, I was also asked by um, Ms. Scheib Snyder to include the 2024 to date schedule mm -hmm. to see who was, I guess, what the stations were being covered, yeah. which I did put in there. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, is that something you want to? Roll over to the next business meeting since she's not here. I have no idea. Did you get any feedback from her when you gave it to her? I did not, no. Okay. We can go over it. You can watch YouTube. Well, the, the one concern that I have, and, and that's why I was wanting to ask why she requested this, because I, it's not our job to micromanage what the chief does with his schedule. Nonetheless, I uh, provided it. Oh, I see that. That's 
I was curious to know what, what she was looking for or what she was interested in. But I guess we don't get to ask that. Uh, she also requested, um, and I saw that as well, uh, the, the capital amounts that have been spent, which I didn't really <laughs> clarify. I sent her an email back because I didn't know if she meant our capital replacement fund or the ARPA um, spreadsheet that I had showed the board last last month. Yeah. Um, I emailed her asking her to you know, be more specific, but she never responded back. Um, and that was well several weeks you, ago. You so. supplied. So I supplied the board again with what I thought she was talking about. Um, there wasn't really much of an update. Right. Um, I think and without her input again, we're lost. But my concern once more, where this comes by, Holly Township, because of the actions of Rose Township in the past, when we passed uh, the motion to donate our two hundred thousand, we made a contingent upon the fact that they did two hundred thousand, because we didn't want ourselves find ourselves right. with some of the games that have happened in the past. Interestingly enough, as I look at the disbursement of funds. We've spent twice as much as they have to date. But my hope is that eventually you're going to use it all. Yeah, we, we have because projects planned, and it's it, just you. It shows 66000 remaining for Holly Township. It's my understanding we're going to be cutting that check here shortly anyway. Yeah. Uh, so all of that will Most of the balance that is left to receive from the two townships combined is going to be spent when we get delivery of the rescue truck. And that's what I thought. Um, that's going to be a big put the truck and, and, and that was the result of the down payment for that mm -hmm. truck was with Holly Town. I get it. So I just wanted to draw okay. attention to the fact that while they're always accusing, here we are, our money's gone first before their money hits. And, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To even feel that. <laughs> What'd you say? Don't include me, please. I didn't, but I said. I wasn't part of that. I'm sorry. I even have to bring it up, but. It's okay, but I understand what you're saying because I saw earlier. I, was going through I didn't create and the situation. Two thousand dollar contributions and the amount that was spent by yeah. Rose Township was eighty-five. The two hundred thousand dollar contribution by Holly Township and the amount of spent is one hundred thirty-three. Yeah. So, I totally understand what you're saying. No, I just, like I said, I hate that I even have to feel the need to do that, but it is what it is. All right. Um, I, I guess, kind of circling back to the agenda item, and Chief Weil is here, is there anything that you guys, as the board, wanted to ask him about all of this? Does he want to be chief? Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was simple. Well, <laughs> now we have a different problem. <laughs> well, so to be honest with you, I think there's a couple. There's pr the presentation you made tonight and the information you gave us. There are probably three issues that need to be dealt with by this board on an individual basis that I see coming out of this, and that'll have to come back to the next board. One of them is the salary. One of them is the the job creation, and then the third one is who fills the position of chief and how the board looks at it. To me, those are the three hot points to which you <coughs> presented tonight. And once I read through all the paperwork and, like I said, play with my highlighter, I might find another one. I don't know. We're chief, uh, not almost chief, chief. Assistant uh, chief. <laughs> uh, where did you get the job description from as far as what a fire chief should do is that something it's, that's it's standard in in, oh, yeah. in the world? It's, it's a boilerplate yeah. job description okay. that every department but, has for their chief. But this department adopted it back in two thousand and five, right? When I started full time, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. Then what does the assistant chief? Is he bringing some of his uh, things that he does now into the chief role, or is well he'll be handing that off to? His assistant that he chooses. Well, the, the assistant dis chief gets coffee for the chief. The discussions that we've had, because <laughs> um, I've talked with him about this, obviously, um, m most of what what Matt's doing already, he can continue doing, um, with you know a little delegation from you know other people as far as probably some of the fire code stuff goes. But but we've we've had uh, hours of discussion on this, and and we we think it'll. It'll be a very 
very light, if any, transition period, and, and, and most of that stuff will still and stay. And are those things that he does now as assistant in the fire chief manual on what he should do, be doing? The assistant fire chief? As he becomes fire chief, and he's bringing some of his assistant stuff with them. Is that in the manual already, or is that just going to be assumed that he's going Probably to do it? Probably not specifically, mm -hmm. but the general um, the general conditions that the fire chief is responsible for are all part of mm -hmm. what the assistant chief's yeah. responsibilities are. Okay, it's just how it's designated internally, right, and how it's broken up mm -hmm. and, and handled. Okay, and if he finds it. His fire chief abilities, things that he has to do, he can also pass those back down to his assistant if he needs to. Right, and that's why I said there will, there will probably be a small amount of stuff that's re redistributed, redelegated to people. Okay. Um, but you know, overall, the majority of, of what what Chief Wiles has been doing is um, he'll remain doing. It's the same so, with our deputies; they their job descriptions are pretty much ours for mm -hmm. the most part. Only okay. they're not voting. Okay. So the other, then the other thing, the board, here's number, I told you to come up with number four. The fourth one is, if, if the board were to go that direction, then we would also have to find a replacement for the assistant chief. Well, would that not be the fire chief's responsibility to find an assistant? Yes. Not, we're not yes. micromanaging We're not right. telling them what to do. Right, and that, give them that money would be and up to him, and, and like I was telling him, I, I think we should probably just be focusing on, on the two positions right now, yeah, and I that agree. transition, because it is... Yeah, but know, how long is the union going to allow you to have that position open? Well, again, I think they realize common sense that we're going through a, a phase here that's going to need some time to develop into, mm -hmm. and... and well, I, I appreciate that sentiment, but typically when I've dealt with unions, there's actually time frames that are... No? All right. I'm just asking. I just wanted. And again, um, you know, on July 1st, if if we go forward with this, Chief Wild may decide he wants a total restructure of the command staff underneath him, um, and he'll have to deal with that. And so, I, I don't think, from a board standpoint, that we should really be too worried about trying to change anything. It's but, farther down. I'm yeah. just wanting to make sure we're crossing yeah, our T's I, and dotting our I's. No, I, I hear yeah. this. I, I, I belong to a union once upon a time, and when they vacated a position for, due to a promotion, they had like 60 days to replace it. I think the yeah. fact that we're also adding an additional platoon position that is ultimately a union position at the same time will suffice or balance out anything mm -hmm. that they may have you know, to argue with. So is is that is that the time to have the discussion about removing the assistant chief from the union? Very, very, I mean, uh, that could get sticky. Um, that's a change to working conditions, right? So at that point, you could blow the whole contract up and start from scratch, and that's. Probably, yeah, I'm just asking. You know, no, I say that's probably not kosher at that point in time. Yeah. A year from now, we can renegotiate that maybe. And you can start talking now. Mm -hmm. right? and the, yeah. The door's always open. And obviously, you'll be not in the union if. When you become fire chief. Well, and, and by putting it out now, it's not like, hey, here's a surprise. Now look what they're try I'm trying to lay out for the future, what, what my thoughts are and what I'm looking at. And I understand the union These side. Are the but complications of a union. Sure. <coughs> they're losing a union member, but we're going to give them one. Right. Will the administrative manager position be union too? No. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> No. Uh, in my mind, that would be another contract like what you have with me currently. Mm -hmm. Right. An at-will employee with a certain year contract under these right. pretenses. Well, right. yeah. and that's why I said I just, when you start looking at this down the road, those are things to consider. Because mm -hmm. underneath the, the assistant chief is... The, is yeah. Right now captain. it's captain. Yes. And then under the captain is lieutenant. Right. So you've got, you know, you've got this structure that you look at, and I, I just... But know. again, that structure is up to the chief to design. Mm -hmm. No, I get, so I was, but I was talking about who belongs in the union and who doesn't, right. as far as going for. Okay. So you'll have two on the island, though, yep. after this transition. Perhaps, yes. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be chief? 
<laughs> so there's a question for you. Do I want to cheat? So. Jeremy. First of all, tell them the first thing I said. I gave you the hypothetical. What did I say to you when I first came to you? I said, hypothetically, if you were going to be chief, chief well, would you I, accept it? And you said, well, hell no. I say, how about letting him answer? Yeah, I, I would accept an interim appointment and do the job that needs to be done and give the board the opportunity to decide what they were looking for in the chief. Somebody that may have more uh, administrative experience, because one of the things I talked about is um, the budgeting. Uh, QuickBooks and all of those administrative functions along that line. Some of the HR stuff is very foreign to me. Um, I can sit down with the chief and we can talk about health care benefits and I can walk out of the office and I can come back in two days later and ask him the same question because it just, some of it just doesn't make sense. So I talked about doing things like contracting out these services and letting a chief be a chief and focus on, you know, the operation of the department, the service delivery, you know, all of the things that are important to Granny Smith Apple and, you know, all of the people that we serve. So then it went from a hypothetical to, well, guess what I was thinking? And so our two ideas kind of hit uh, right there and, um, you know, without the need to to put all of those things together, that changes the interim appointment because I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I have no doubt that I can do the job. Um, again, it's it's the board's decision to put the person in place who's going to run the department. And you know, if this is the direction that the board travels, uh, I will be happy to fill that position for sure. So yes, to answer the question with length. Good to know. Okay. I like the in coming from the inside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are advantages uh, to hiring from the outside, too, because they're not from the inside. It's a fresh set of eyes. It's a new person. It's, you know, new breath. It's new uh, ideas, new attitudes, new whatever. And, you know, quite frankly, that can go two ways. Mm -hmm. It can be the best thing in the world, or it could be what in the heck did we just do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the years I've been in the service, um, I've seen both of those happen, <laughs> uh, some of them very close to home, and, you know, again, it's, it's ultimately the board's decision, um, the chief has made a recommendation, and, you know, here we are. All right. Revisit next month? Mm -hmm. How are you? Yeah. Any further discussion? Well, actually, we're in a uh, report. Yeah, uh, Doug, do you have anything to add or <clears throat> just, just an answer to what you were talking about the transition from assistant chief to chief? People should know that for the last several years, huge bulks of Matt's time has been tied up in the migration of the whole radio system that's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Also, the responsibility of all of the IT and the phone systems, which we now have a service provider, and it puts him in a perfect position to cover the management items that a fire chief would typically do, X, the administrative functions. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Anything outside of that you want no. to go over? No. Captain Seal? Uh, do we have uh, well, Lieutenant Blasco? You're here. Did you have? No, uh, I just I sent Debbie and uh, Karen the flyer for this mobile arms and the address them. So you guys can share those for us. Agree? Which I did already. Yeah. And I don't. Is, is there anybody here of the Firefighters Association that wants to speak on it? Oh, there you are, <coughs> Logan. Uh, the new radio is working out. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good. The sound yeah. is incredible. Yeah, very yeah. clear. And yeah. they're bright green. <laughs> you can't lose them. Oh, that's a good, Don't though. Say that. <laughs> Somebody yeah. will accept that challenge. <laughs> uh, to introduce myself, uh, I'm Logan Campbell. Uh, I'm actually the acting president for the association currently. 
Uh, as it stands, I don't think anything's changed from last month. We're still looking for a place for the banquet. Everything's running smoothly so far, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is all, sir. Oh, okay. Reports from Holly Township. Um, I guess for those that have noticed the uh, barn project, the, the never-ending barn project on the farmstead, Mother Nature has really messed with us this year. We've had so much rain, you couldn't get on the ground, then you thought, well, winter will get here and it'll freeze. Nope, that hasn't happened either. So we've really been caught between a rock and a hard strip. We're trying to shift gears and get the road in um, so we can have a way to get on the property. Um, Dean said about everything he could up until this point, and the problem's been getting in and out. He was on the property then and got the trailer off of there, which he hasn't been able to do for a is month. It, is the road in the interior, it's an interior road that goes um, in the entrance just north of the north house. Then it goes all the way up through the middle of the property. Yeah, I saw the top side they were moving. Well, it goes further down. If you go down just before the curve, you'll see some stakes <coughs> down there. It goes down, and for now, it will be kind of a cul-de-sac parking area on that end. Eventually, that will open up to the road and be the second entrance. So you'll be able to go in one way and out the other. When the farmstead is in operation, um, that road will be fenced off where this barn is being built and down on the other end and the middle of it will only be for the farm moving up and through the farmstead itself. It, will, it won't be a parking, but the parking lot will be right there by the north house where the, where the old uh, community garden was. Out there. Uh, Rose Township. Um, let's see, we had a meeting Wednesday night um, <clears throat> a contentious meeting. We had a uh, presentation by a firm in Troy, a lawyer, to rewrite our employee manual because it's 24 years old. So is our uh, administrative manual. So we got we gave them a quote, or they gave us a quote of four thousand dollars to redo the employee manual. So they're going to start on that. Then they'll have to do the administrative manual and get some updates. We had a presentation by our auditor. We had the highest uh, rating for the audit, outstanding. Um, we've been dealing with uh, elections since Saturday. So the, the early voting has been open since um, this weekend. So I go over there and open and close, and my deputy does too, and Sean Miller's over there. It's running very smoothly. As of this morning, we had 100 people so far. I don't know what it was this afternoon. It was 100, yeah. 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people are getting used to it. Um, when I was there, where, we had, where are they doing it? It's at Springfield Oaks at the fairgrounds in oh. the big, um, you know, banquet facility. People are over there playing pickleball, uh, you know, in the gym part. Is that so, for Holly Township, too? Yeah, so Holly Township's been coming through Springfield Township and Rose Township. So all of them can go over there, and there's ballots on demand where you just tell them what kind of ballot you want. It prints out your ballot for whatever um, township and precinct you're in. Oh, oh interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's been going really smoothly. Uh, we do that until Sunday, and then Monday we set up for the election for Tuesday. So, oh, so it's open Saturday and Sunday as well? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> So we've had people call and I'll say, okay, you want to go vote? Then go over there and vote. You can also take, if you have an absentee ballot, you can also take your absentee ballot over there. They'll take the stub off and you can feed it through. Just like you were in the actual precinct. So it's, it's going great. Oakland County is the one. They brought in all their equipment. Um, we're splitting the cost between all three townships. So it's a cost savings for all of us. So she doesn't have to run her own. I don't have to run my own. And Springfield doesn't have to run their own. So we're splitting the cost, so it's been going great. Very good. And Did you have anything you wanted to add? Mm -mm. No, that's good. That's all I've been doing for the last week, so. Okay, then our citizen at large. Um, Holly Kiwanis Cornhole was, what, last Saturday? Two Saturdays ago. Um, 
we had 73 players a year ago, and it was 88 this year. So I think people are uh, showing that they liked what was happening. We uh, raised over $10,000 wow. wow. on Kiwanis and the Excellent. people of Holly. So we are, uh, some of that money will go towards uh, the new trade center at the Holly High School that's being built right now. So we're going to support the, we're still in negotiations what we're exactly we're going to do that, but we're going to support uh, one or two uh, graduates and if they're going to go to trade school. So mm, right. that's great. Cool. Yeah. We already support uh, two college um, grants or scholarships. Uh, we do two other ones at Memorial Day for uh, athletic girl and athletic scholar girl. So that's a total. Of, plus, we have one more Thomas one. So I think there's a total of six or seven that we're going to end up with that, with this money. So I appreciate all the support. Um, it was pretty well run, and uh, we didn't have too many hiccups except for one. We, we do raffles, and there's a board that we buy uh, lotto tickets, not lotto tickets, but scratch-off tickets. And so we do use a deck of cards, sell the deck of cards, and rip them off and, and pull the ten of hearts for the winner. And the one girl, a Amy, came up, yeah, it's me, yeah, all excited, got the big board, you know. And all of a sudden, here's this little kid with a ten of hearts in his hand. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. Guess, <laughs> guess, who, guess who put the deck of cards in the, to begin with? It wasn't you. It wasn't me. So <laughs> for about five seconds, I go, how am I going to fix this, you know? Matched her piece to the card that was pulled. Yeah, when we rip it, I go, okay, you two, both of you come right here. And I put them both. And you wouldn't believe the one the, the little boy had that wasn't the winner. It was so close, but there was, a, there was a definitely a side that wasn't ripped right. So <laughs> anyways, it worked out. I didn't have too much ache on my face, so. Appreciate it again, everybody that participated. It was a great event. And we'll be doing it February 8th next year. So, Oh, there you go. That will be my report. Okay, next we'll go to public comments. Same rules as before, three minutes, name and address. Who's up first? Mr. Stern. Don't be scared. <laughs> No, no matter what you do, you're going to be stern. Oh, yeah. Give <laughs> me a stern 1445 Munger Road. Uh, I guess I was taken by surprise about the chief's resignation. Um, I'm, I guess, relieved that the plans for the transi transition and the I don't want to use the word replacement, but fulfilling the, the opening. The fluidity, which seems to be going to take place. Um, I also want to draw attention to the harmonious conduct in this meeting in the productive behavior in the meeting and I want to draw attention to two of the board members, Brad Stilwell and Debbie Miller, who are going to be part of the Rose Township administration in the next term. They and the other candidates are Bill Jobes, treasurer, Debbie Miller, clerk, Mike Mayhar, trustee, and Debbie Bordeaux for trustee. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Uh, I do, like Julie said, this is a surprise uh, to hear the Chief's uh, plans. Um, I know this is something that him and his wife have been working for for a long time. And uh, you know, I think, uh, as all of us firefighters are going to say, we're already sad to see you leave, but excited for your new uh, adventures in life with your wife. And um, so, just in that, is 
you know, um, the other thing what I was going to bring up is we had a, uh, a call last month that um, kind of became a little bit of a hectic call, but it was a mutual aid to the, to the village. And uh, I just wanted to commend our staff that was there that day that uh, we were called for mutual aid for a fire and it turned into a kind of a chaotic uh, scene once we got there with a CPR call. And um, just so you guys know that our guys responded in a way that the engine went out the door like it should have and as all the requests were being made, um, this department uh, I think came, overcame some adversities and supplied some resources to that uh, gentleman that uh, he definitely gave him a better outcome than he would have had if, if we had not been able to kind of um, transition the way we did to get the correct apparatus there in a time we entered. So I know this, this story came out, so I just kind of wanted you guys to know that, you know, and you know, as a lieutenant, seeing everybody that came together to make happen what happened is kind of training <coughs> to our training and what we uh, strive to do for our communities. So that's it. All right. Anyone else for public comment? <coughs> Going once, twice? Okay, um, before I adjourn the meeting, I, our next meeting will be on Monday night, March 18th at 6.30, and it will be at Station 1 on Grange Hall Road. Yes, and before you adjourn, uh, you just reminded me, we are going to have the last three or four employees that we've hired full-time to do their official... Um, Swearing in mm -hmm. ceremony. Okay. Um, my fault. I totally dropped the ball on that. And one of the guys had asked about it a few weeks ago, and I said, Oh my gosh, I, it just never, with everything going on, it just never crossed my mind. So we have, uh, I believe there's four. Okay. Um, okay. Four people that we've brought in since last summer um, that need to be sworn in. and. So we'll be planning on doing that next okay. next month as well. If there's nothing more to come before this board, I will close the meeting at 744. I didn't hear what you said. Right up. Like, up. They didn't mention a thing about us, and, and we were the ones that did everything. I'm sure you did. Tra trainer, okay. trainee. So we go big off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a know, shame. You know, Scott was concerned about letting <laughs> Almost everybody know, but <laughs> without creating a wedge. That's why I say it. I know it. <laughs> other. You know, depart. Uh, I get but, it. But that's a yeah, shame. It's, yeah, I get um, it. Unfortunately, it's you know they they took all the credit. Of course they did. Uh, and we were almost blatantly. Uh, to me. Yeah, I can, I can see and that. What's that now? In reality, we were. I think he gave us a I think so. Was there. I he think was so. The one with the AED <laughs> specifically that got there. Right as the police did, and, 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 and his wife. <laughs> the and, they, and, 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 and they said it was the their police that did it, right. and that their first responders did the rest, and it was like it's not that know. difficult. It bothers me that she asks for. And by the way, we put their fire out. Yeah, to boot. It's just I mean, a jam. Yeah. We ran. And we ran two calls. I'm not two two nope. And I appreciate yeah. that because we did miss a beat on it, and I'm I'm glad. Horrible. And it's. It's true, so, uh, because and that's and what causes that. controversy. You know? Why do you need it? Yeah. If, if you want to accept it, because he has to do something, so that's what I told her. We, and as it turns you made out, that one comment, and I think yep. I might have said something yeah, to you about it. it. It's not I'm like, well, it's that's the yeah. public. It's going to get all spent yeah. the best. That's why it's a matter. You're going to be in charge of the gap. Well, while <laughs> well, you're leaving, I said, okay. well, you're leaving. You know, he just Come said on. <laughs> and I said this morning to him, I said, well, you know, 
That's fine, and oh. we would really uh, appreciate that. Burner? But we may need more. We may need to have, you know, the trucks may not have a, the ability to turn around. There's, you know, it's not just as simple as that. So he said he would include it in some of their planning as well. And so just like when we look at it. You talk an uh, I have well, another coming from the center of the right. Right. First of all, I said, like two setbacks. Right. Uh, Scott, two where are we going to run from? Two setbacks at 75 uh, feet. That Michigan, makes an acre. Uh, laser engraving right there. Uh, that's what I said. So I said, don't think an acre is going to work. Oh, that's it? 